Hey everyone, in this video, as promised, we'll be doing some practice problems with uh, Riemann sums. So as always, with, even with my videos in differential calculus. Hey everyone, welcome to another practice problem video here. As promised, we'll be doing some practice on Riemann sums. As always with my practice problem videos, the best way to use them is to first try each problem on your own, check the solution, and uh, also just check out the explanation to make sure you've understood each aspect, especially if you didn't get the problem correct. So make sure you're doing that because there are some things that I talk about in these videos that sometimes may not be explicitly talked about in the in the lecture video. So it's always helpful to take a look through these anyways. Uh, and also use a table of contents to navigate to problems that you need. So uh, if you look in the description or in the uh, in the little bar over here in the timeline, you can find table you can find a table of contents that'll take you to each type of problem that you might that will um, to each problem that we'll cover in this video. So you can use that to fast forward if you, there's something you need more. Uh, you want to spend more time working on than others, you can do that as well. But so that's that's there for you. But anyways, without further ado, let us get started. All right, so first problem here, we have f of x equals sine of 3x over 2. Uh, and we're going to use a left-hand Riemann sum with 8 subintervals to estimate the signed area here uh, from 0 to 4 pi over 3. So this is again just like what we did in the lecture video, so the procedure is no different. We're going to start by finding our delta x, which is going to be 4 pi over 3 minus 0 over, uh, over 8, remember b minus a over n, uh, and this is just going to come out to pi over 6, right? because 4 and 8 cancel to give you 1 half, pi over 3 times 1 half is pi over 6. So that's going to be our delta x. So now if you remember, when we're calculating our area, we can factor out the pi over 6, right? And just sum together the different values of f of x that we're interested in, right? So we're going to factor out pi over 6 and then uh, put in all the uh, relevant heights that we need inside the parentheses. So the first one we want is, uh, since we're using a left-hand Riemann sum and our, interval, and our first subinterval is going to be from 0 to pi over 6, we're going to start with uh, f of 0. Right, because once again, if you can imagine, our first rectangle would be on the subinterval from zero to pi over six, which would, I think would be uh, maybe somewhere about a little bit more than a half, perhaps. So it would be somewhere around here. So it would be this first uh, subinterval there, and so we'd multiply this width by the height of the of that rectangle, which would be determined by f of zero. All right, so that's that. Now the next one would be same idea. We'd go. We'd look for f of um, f of pi over 6, because right, again, left-hand dream on some, this next subinterval will be pi over 6 to 2 pi over 6, so it would be something along, the, it would be kind of like drawing the rectangle like this over here. Right. Next one would be f of 2 pi over 6, clear, you can see how this is, how this is playing out. Then we'll have f of and 2 pi over 6, by the way, is just pi over 3. Uh, f of 2 pi over 6, then f of 3 pi over 6, which we can simplify to f of pi over 2. And then we have f of uh, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. Plus f of 5 pi over 6, which we can't simplify any further. So f of pi, which is 6 pi over 6 and f of 7 pi over 6. And that's all that we need. We, we wanted eight subintervals. We have eight subintervals. And we have, uh, all the eight, so we have all the eight rectangles that we need. Great, so now we just need to calculate each of these. Uh, we just need to evaluate f of x at each of these points, add them all together, multiply by pi over 6, and we are, we'll be done. So what that's gonna come out to, right? So we have, we have this here. So f of 0, remember that's just going to be 0, because sine of 3 I have three times 0 over 2 is also 0. Now when we plug in pi over 6, don't forget that this is sine of 3 pi over 2, 3x over 2, excuse me. So we're going to have to multiply pi over 6 by 3 halves, and then take the sine of whatever comes next. So when we plug in pi over 6, the uh, 3 and the 6 would cancel, leaving a 2 in the denominator, so this would be a pi over 4. So f of pi over 6 would really be the same thing as sine of pi over 4, which we know is just going to be a square root of 2 
over 2. This next one, 2 pi over 6, again, same thing as pi over 3. So when we plug that in, uh, the 3 in the top and the bottom will cancel. So we would have, um, it would just be the same thing as sine of pi over 2, which is just going to be 1. Same thing as sine of pi over 2, and uh, you'll get the picture there. Plug in pi over 2, uh, that's the same thing as 3 pi over 4. And 3 pi over 4, That's the sine is still positive at 3 pi over 4, so we'll get another root 2 over 2. 2 pi over 3 and 3 pi over 2 are reciprocal, so that's just going to give us sine of pi, which again is 0. 5 pi over 6, we plug that in, we will get, uh, let's see, I think we get 5 pi over 4, which would actually be a negative root 2 over 2. 5 pi over 4, sine is negative, past pi. Uh, then f of pi, we plug that in, that's pretty straightforward, that's just going to be sine of 3 pi over 2, which will give us a negative 1. 7 pi over 6, plug that in, that would give us 7 pi over 4. So that would be negative root 2 over 2. So sine of 7 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. And now we just add all these together, multiply by pi over 6, and we'll be done. But we can make some cancellations. So we have a positive root 2 over 2 here, another positive root 2 over 2 here, and two negative root 2 over 2s here. So all of these will just cancel out with each other. So these two will cancel, these two will cancel. Uh, and then we also have a positive 1 and a negative 1. These two will also cancel. So we're just left with two zeros, which you know just sum to 0. So our final answer is actually just going to be pi over 6 times 0, which is just going to be 0. And again, this, may, this makes sense if we think about this as a signed area, right? What that tells us is that the area above the curve is the same as the area below the curve, right? And if we think about this in the context of a displacement, if the velocity is given by sine of 3x over 2, then what this is saying is that uh, if that there's been no displacement, right? So if you're if this is your start if you're at your starting point at zero, you are now back at that starting same starting point after um, after uh, four pi over three time units, right? So that's our first example there. All right, so for our next example here, we have this polynomial, uh, 1 half x cubed minus 3x minus 1, and we'd like to use a midpoint Riemann sum this time, so something a little bit new, with three subintervals to estimate the signed area under f of x on negative 3 to 3. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So this will be slightly different than what we've seen before with the left and right subintervals, but the general structure of what we do is still, is still pretty much the same. Right, so let's start with finding our delta x, as always. This, of course, is just going to be, um, we have 3 minus negative 3 divided by 3. So we would end up with 6 over 3, so we, our delta x would just be 2. Right? And so when we find our area, we can once again factor that 2 out, and then just put in the, the values that we want here for our heights. Right? So... Now, the, the tricky thing about midpoint sum is that you can't just sort of start at any one of the endpoints. You have to start in the middle of your interval and then keep moving uh, along that path, right? So we can't. So we don't start at negative 3 or, or, uh, negative, or negative 1. We have to start at negative 2. So we'd actually start with f of negative 2. And we, if we can imagine that with a rectangle here, what we're saying is we want to draw our rectangle uh, for this first... So this we want the rect our rectangle with with this particular width, right, with a width of two. But we want the uh, we want the height to be uh, over here. So this would be what our rectangle is. Right? Midpoint sum means that the middle of our rectangle is what we want to touch the function, right? Or that's what we use this the middle point of our interval here is what we use to. Uh, determine how tall the function is, how to, how tall the rectangle is. Right, so that's that. So f of minus 2. For the next interval, this first interval was negative 3 to minus 1. The next interval is going to be from minus 1 to, to positive 1. So then we'd have f of 0, because 0 is in between uh, minus 1 and 1. So if this is minus 1, that's 1. This is the subinterval. We're looking in the middle, so we'd have we'd we'd, we'd uh, take our height at zero. 
So this would be that next rectangle there, right? Next one, uh, this will be the last subinterval we need. Uh, we would go f of, so the next subinterval would be from positive one to three. So we would take we would take f of two. So, so that's three, uh, we would take the height here for this particular width, for this particular subinterval. Draw that better. So that'll be what our approximation looks like visually. Right? So, and again, the key thing with these is that they're approximations. Right? So this is not gonna tell us the perfect area under the curve, uh, this is just an approximation. And you can see it's a pretty decent approximation because we do we do overshoot the area a little bit over here and over here, but that compensates by the fact that we don't calculate a lot of the area over here and over here. So it's a pretty decent approximation, right? So let's go ahead and evaluate what each of these are. So this would be the same thing as, um, let's come down to a new line here. So we have two times, so f of minus two, if we plug that in, uh, minus two cubed is gonna be a minus eight. Minus eight divided by two is minus four. Uh, my, three times minus two is positive. Uh, three minus three times minus two is going to be minus six. Negative signs will cancel, so that'll give us a positive six. And then we subtract one. So what we'd have is minus four plus six minus one, which would give us a positive one for f of minus two. Next thing we plug in zero. That one's a little nicer. Both these just go to zero, so we're just left with a negative one there. And then for f of two, two cubed is again eight, but this time it's a positive eight. Uh, eight over two is four. Minus three times two is gonna be minus six. So we have four minus six, that's gonna be minus two. Then minus one, so we get minus three. And all of these numbers make sense, right? So we have a positive height for this first rectangle, a negative, and negative heights for, and or excuse me, we have, negative areas for these two rectangles and a positive area for this one because that's what that's what they're supposed to look like right because this rectangle points below the x-axis this one also points below the x-axis this one points above so what we've these numbers that we've got here make sense right so we've done this now we just sum and multiply so these two cancel so this we're just left with minus three times two so we get minus six as our area and again, the negative answer doesn't need to intimidate you. All that's saying is that if this was like a displacement, if this was a velocity function, that means that what this is telling us is that from in the, on this particular range of time intervals, uh, you have gone six units to the left. Right? Your displacement is six units to the to the opposite side of your of your starting point or whatever you consider positive. All right. So that's how this works. All right, so next problem here. Now this one is a little bit different from what we've done before, but only in that the function itself is presented to us in a different way. So instead of having an explicit uh, function given to us as a, uh, for velocity as a function of time, we're being given the car's velocity, just specific values of the car's velocity in this table here, right? So we need to use this information to, uh, to find the Riemann sum. So we've been asked to find the displacement of the car experiences after eight hours using a midpoint Riemann sum in four subintervals. So nothing to worry about. Let's just start by finding delta x, though, just like we normally would. Well, we're just looking at this eight-hour interval from zero to eight, so it would just be eight minus zero over four subintervals. It's just going to be two, right? So our area is going to be two times some other stuff. So let's look at each subinterval. So our first subinterval is gonna be from zero, maybe we could use a different color for that. Um, it's gonna be from zero to two. Well, what's in, the, what's in the middle of zero and two? Well, one, right? So we're gonna have f of, we're gonna have v of one, and it's gonna be minus five. Okay. Next subinterval is gonna be from two to four, and the middle of that is three and the value of v at three is 14. So we're just gonna tag on 14. Next interval, four to six, so midpoint is five. So we add the minus three there. And last but not least, we have velocity from six to eight. 
midpoint is 7 so we just add 6 so our final answer is just going to be so uh, we have minus 8 plus 6 gives us minus 2 14 minus 2 is just going to be 12 2 times 12 it will give us 24 and specific we can say 24 miles just to tag our units on there so that right there is our final answer for uh, displacement all right one final example here this one a little bit more involved than what we've seen but at the same time it's still nothing to be afraid of we'll walk through it step by step so function g of x is defined to be a semicircle with radius 1 centered at 1 comma 0 for this interval 0 comma 1 uh, piecewise linear on 2 to 4 and the quadratic x minus 5 squared on 4 to 7 all that's saying is that over here the graph is a semicircle over here it's two lines so we can assume both these are linear and down here for the rest of this part here it's the quadratic x minus 5 squared right so that's the equation of the function for this part the first thing that we're being asked to do is to find the side area under g of x from 0 to 4 right so we want to find the signed area here from 0 to 4. But it doesn't tell us anything about Riemann sums, how many subintervals to use. Uh, but that's okay, because you'll notice that these things are shapes that we already have formulas for the areas of. Right? So a semicircle, that's just 1 half pi r squared, because the area of a circle is pi r squared, just taking the half of that. And we have a triangle and a square here. So these things we can actually find the area for exactly, so we don't need to bother with Riemann sums. Because remember, Riemann sums are an approximation for shapes that we don't have a formula for the uh, for the area of. So let's take this first piece over here. So let's just start by writing this out. So the area of this first uh, interval here from 0 to 4 is going to be, well, we'll have the area of this semicircle here. We'll have the area of that semicircle there, plus the area of this triangle. And we add that all to the area of this square. Right? Now we just have to calculate each of these uh, and add them all together. So for this first circle, for the semicircle here, that's just going to be, again, uh, we take the area of the full circle, right? The area because this is a circle with radius 1. So we're just going to do pi times 1 squared. But we divide that by 2 because it's only a semicircle. So our, this final area is going to come out to uh, 1 half, just pi over 2. Right? Just pi over 2 because 1 squared is just 1. Right? So that's that. Next one here, the area of this triangle, we use 1 half base times height. So uh, if you look at the way this graph is scaled, so this circle is centered at 1, 0. So two units are actually, so two uh, marks on this graph is actually just one unit. So we have a width of 1 and a height of 1. So we have base type, base is going to be 1, height is going to be 1. So it's just going to be a half. Area of the square, well, again, it's just a width of 1 and a height of 1. So it's just going to be 1 squared, which is equal to 1. So we have everything we need. right? So we can add those all together. But we need to be careful because we need to take into account the fact that we're dealing with signed areas. This semicircle dips below the x-axis, so we need to assign it a negative value for this area here in our calculations. So we're going to have a, a negative 1 a pi over 2 here, right? a negative pi over 2, and the rest will be positive because both the triangle and the square are above the x-axis. So we have plus uh, 1 half, plus 1. And uh, you don't really need to simplify that any further, but if you wanted to, uh, you would end up with, uh, I think, let's see, this would be 2 over 2, 1 half, so that, that would be 3 minus pi over 2. Yep, so that's that. Part B, now this is where we actually deal with the Riemann sum stuff. Uh, we're going to use a left-hand Riemann sum with three subintervals to find the, si the signed area from 4 to 7. And again, that's the quadratic part, the the quadratic part here and again that tells us that it reiterates home what the point of a Riemann sum is the quadratic portion is the one part of this graph for which we don't have a formula to find the area because it's not a nice shape so that's where we need the Riemann sum 
But the process is exactly the same as before. So we find our delta x. So 7 minus 4 over, we need uh, 3 sub-intervals, so over 3. 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 over 3 is just going to be 1. And then we just need to find our area as normal. So we take 1 times well, uh, we're using a left-hand Riemann sum, so our first, uh, the first point we would start at would be f of 4, right? So that's going to be over here, that's our first rectangle would be, be that there. So we start with f of 4, uh, and we can actually plug this right into this quadratic here and just solve it straight away, because that's pretty, this is a pretty nice thing to deal with. So f of 4 is just going to be minus 1 squared, which is 1. Sorry, we're, it's a bit of a mess there. Uh, the next thing we want is um, f of 5, right? So we started f of 4, next thing we want is f of 5, right? Because our next subinterval is 5 to 6. So f of 5, again, we can plug that straight in. That's just going to be 0. So we just put in 0 there. And last but not least, we want f of 6, right? So we plug in uh, f of 6, and we plug in 6 into this, we just get another 1. So our final answer is just going to be 1 times 2, so the second area just comes out to 2. Right? So, so now for this final part here, find the total signed area under g of x from 0 to 4. We just add parts a and b together. So for part c, our final answer is going to be uh, 3 minus pi over 2 plus, plus 2. 2 is 4 over 2, so we could just make that um, our final answer would be 7 minus pi over 2. And that right there would be the total signed area under this curve uh, from 0 to, to 7 there. So right, that's the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful, and uh, please do leave a comment if, you, if there's any other questions you think I should go over for Riemann sums, is there anything else you'd like me to clarify, I'd be happy to look into anything that you guys can send me. Uh, but yeah, that's the, I hope you found this helpful, and I will see you guys in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time!